In this unit of our InDesign CS6 course, we're going to fine-tune that basic layout that we created automatically when we auto-flowed text through our total training catalog. I'm going to open up the Pages panel, and when I do, I can see that a lot of these panels have a fair amount of text, but some of them only have just a little bit. And we're going to fine-tune that by compressing this just a little bit and setting it up so the text flow runs a little bit easier than we originally worked with before. So I'm going to double click on page 17. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Captivate 4 Essentials description and I'm going to set it up so it flows right underneath page 16. I do that by getting my type tool, clicking the cursor inside of there so I can see that highlighted. I'm going to go to my paragraph styles and you'll see that it's header selected. Now you'll remember when we created our template for this total training catalog that the header style automatically starts on a brand new page. We need to create a variation on this theme and the way we're going to do that is we're going to click on this create new style button right here It'll create a paragraph style, and when I double click on that, we'll see that that's actually based on the header style that is actually used in the header where we placed our cursor. We're going to name this header No New Page because that's the only difference it's going to have from what we were working with before. I'm next going to go to my Keep Options, and instead of Start Paragraph on Next Page, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up so a new paragraph for the header No New Page can be started anywhere in our InDesign document. So I'm going to say OK. And when I do, it creates header No New Page. Now if you look at this, one of the things that we'll see is that it puts it immediately beneath the line before. I'm just going to manually set a return above that header by clicking to the right of the text before and hitting a return. So it just gives me a little bit of extra space for where I'm working right there. Let's work our way back to page 15. Okay, and as I can see that, I'm in that exact same position. I've got room for all kinds of type there. So let's click into Adobe Soundbooth.cs5 and what we're going to do in this case is we're going to make that no new page and as we do that, we'll see that it skips that away and brings it backwards just a little bit to fit just like so. Now as I've done that, I'm still going to keep pages 16 and 17. If I get my selection tool, I can see that it still has those text frames inside there. You never want to delete pages from an InDesign document as long as you're working with the copy. Once all the copy and the layout set, then we can start changing the rules and judgment call. While we're working with this document and making changes, you want to leave the extra pages. It doesn't hurt to have them in there, and it saves you from duplicating work. So, I've got pages 14 and 15 set. I'm going to go back here to Adobe Premiere Pro CS5 on page 13. Click inside of that, and what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to make that no new page. Put that extra return in there. Let's see how much room we've got here. So on page 11, that works pretty well. So I've got enough room here for the interactivity one. I'm going to change that to no new page. And as I do that, it skips backwards, fits nice and easy. You see the text is moving backwards slowly but steadily. Put that extra return in. And we'll take this one right here. We'll make that no new page. Okay, it moves backwards. I know I've got that great big section there. We'll deal with that in a minute. Keep working backwards. So I'm going to put an extra return in to put that space in. Make this no new page. Working my way back. That actually fits pretty nicely. So I'll leave this one as I've got that set as a header. I'll take this one. I'm going to make that one no new page. It skips into the one up above. Put a return there. 
Do the same thing here. No new page. Put a return in up above. No new page. Put in a return that fits just like so for the one up above. You can see as we do this, it takes a little bit of fine tuning to make everything fit. And that's no big deal. That's really the power of what we're working with. So as I take these and I run backwards, make that one no new page. No new page. Extra return. No new page. Extra return. We can see what it takes to build this and line it up in such a way that we can kind of streamline the layout of this. Many times you'll find as you're doing this type of layout work that it's better to work from back to front. It makes the process much simpler. So now everything lines up nice and easy. Whoops, got a little bit of a fragment there. Let's cheat this paragraph right here by clicking one, two, three, four, that highlights the entire paragraph. And we'll change the character width from 100 down to 96%. And what that did is that skipped it down to the previous page. So what we had set previously as a 17-page document now has text in only eight of them. But we have the extra pages set as we need them. So that's pretty good. We're actually doing pretty good work here. I'm going to do one more thing. As I look at this, I've done some work. I've basically changed how this page is laid out. I want to change the version of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the A Master pages. I'm going to delete my orange triangle and I'm going to replace it with a green circle. So there's my circle. I'm going to give it a fill of green. And that lets me know that I've gone all the way through the document and made a major change and I've got it right. This is very important. The longer the long documents are that you're working with and the more publications you use to assemble them, the more important doing this version control thing is going to be. Let's go back to our pages panel. And what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to double click on page two once again. As I do that, I can see that this type kind of looks boring. We're going to take this T for the total training here, and we're going to make it a large initial cap. So it has a great big T, and the type's going to wrap around that. The way we do that is we're going to create a brand new paragraph style that's based on our body copy. So I'm going to click into that first paragraph right underneath Adobe Acrobat, 10 Pro Essentials. I'm going to delete this text that says description. And then I'm going to go to create a new style. And this new style is going to have my drop cap information. So I'm going to name this drop cap since that's what it's going to do. I'm going to go down to where it says drop caps and nested styles and I'm going to set this up in such a way that it's going to be three lines deep and it's going to have 
one character. So it's only going to take the first character from the first word and set that in. Looks pretty spiffy. As we've got that built, if I want to see what it looks like in a preview, just click that preview button, and that's what your drop cap would look like, just like so. That actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to say OK. And as I do that, I now have a drop cap style that's built in. Let's get rid of this text for the rest of these descriptions. So I'm going to delete the description. I'm going to say that's a drop cap. I'm going to delete this description. I'm going to make that a drop cap. We're going to do the same thing all the way through our InDesign document. When you're doing long documentation like we are right here, it's very important that once you start a task, that you finish it through to completion. So this might take extra effort for me to do it, but it's going to be worth it in the long run. One last time, get rid of the word description, make it a drop cap. Now in this case, as I look at it, it doesn't quite fit. We need to get that extra little fragment over. If I look at this text right here, I'm actually in pretty good shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all this text for the copy fit, and I'm going to change that with just ever so slightly down to 97% as it shows on my screen to get that all to fit inside of eight pages. Now again we've done something that's important. We've gone all the way through the document. We've checked the process. We're going to double check the layout. Just give it a good proof to make sure that we're happy with the end result. Ah, oh, There's a surprise. I need to put an extra return right inside of there. So I've got that set. Looks good for two and three, so we're at the very start of this. We're going to go back to our master pages. I'm going to change that little green circle into a yellow circle because I went all the way through the document and put those drop caps in. Now I'm going to save the file and I've got an updated version for what we're going to be doing next in the following unit of our InDesign CS6 course.